This video is going to cover the topic of the shadow method. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how do you use shadows to find unknown heights? But before we talk about shadows, we need to remember the term similar figures. So remember that similar figures are two shapes that have, well, the same shape, they have congruent corresponding angles, and the sides, the corresponding sides, increase by a constant scale factor. For example, these images are similar, and I can see that each side multiplied by 2 on the smaller figure to get the larger figure. That's true of 6 times 2, 4 times 2, 1 times 2, and 5 times 2. The scale factor um, of these images is 2, and that means the corresponding side on the larger copy is two times the length of the original. We can use our knowledge of scale factor for similar figures to find the length of missing sides. So if we know that these items are similar, we can apply that information to find what is missing. With the knowledge that these are similar, I can look for the scale factor from the corresponding sides that are labeled. And I will do that by setting up a proportion. That is, I'll write equivalent ratios. So on the top, I'll mark the corresponding sides, the corresponding values of the short side. So these two sides match up. And I'm going to just say that this side is 2, and that corresponds to x, whatever that is. And then on my other sides, the longer sides also correspond and match up. So I'm going to go ahead and write those. 8 and 16. And notice that I kept the figures together. So these are both from figure number 1, the small one, and these are both from figure number 2. So kind of keeping everything in order, consistent and careful. And since I know that these need to be equivalent and proportional, um, I know that whatever I multiplied 8 by to make 16 is also what I need to multiply my 2 by. And this is my scale factor. This is a fairly friendly example, so I can tell pretty quickly that 8 times 2 makes 16, so 2 times 2 will tell me my missing side. And of course, 2 times 2 is 4, so that means my missing side, the missing side, or x, must be 4. That's a pretty friendly, straightforward example. But sometimes we need to use our knowledge of similar figures to calculate measurements we can't actually reach and can't actually physically measure. Like when something's very high and we can't reach it, right? Take this tree. I can't reach the top of a tree to measure it, but I can use what I know. So one thing I know is that if the sun is shining down, this triangle is formed by a tree in its shadow. You can see there's a triangle in here formed by the tree in its shadow. So that's one thing I know. I also see that a, another triangle is formed by this student who's standing here and their shadow, right? So this represents the shadow down here on both of them. And I can see that if I connect the points, they're making these um, triangles. And what we may not realize, but is also true, is that these triangles are inherently similar because the sun's rays are parallel. And so the angles that are created here are all congruent from one triangle to the other. Um, and these are similar triangles. So that's kind of some information we have to just know going forward that all of these triangles formed by our shadow method will be, um, con will be similar, excuse me. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in a little bit more information. I'm gonna say that the student is 44 inches tall and that the um, distance from the student standing to the end of their shadow, which can be measured with a ruler, Let's say this is 40 inches long. So that's this line here and the height here that we know. We can also measure the length of a shadow cast by a tree. So let's go ahead and say we've measured that and that's 120 inches long. But what we don't know is this height of the tree. This is our x, it's what we do not know. So what I'm going to do is set up a proportion so I can find the scale factor and use that to find the missing height. So I'm going to try to be consistent here. This is going to be with my um, smaller triangle here, and this will be my larger triangle. 
but I'm gonna make sure that I always match up across from one another this corresponding sides. So I have a 40 inch short side on the shorter triangle, and that corresponds to 120 inches on the other. And then I have 44 inches, that's the longer side, that's how tall my person is, but I don't know how um, tall my tree is. And seeing this organized like this, I can see pretty quickly that four times three is 120, and so I need to do 44 times three, right? That must be my scale factor. Which means if I wanna find the height of the tree, I just need to do 44 times three, and that will tell me how tall my tree is. Which is of course 132 inches, which is I think 11 feet tall, so the tree is 11 feet tall. And we can do this with other objects as well. So this time I'm kind of using this as um, a broomstick. I'm gonna call this my little broomstick here. And I'm gonna still have my same shadow method. So I know of course that because of the sun rays coming down, these are uh, similar triangles. So let's go ahead and say that this stick here is three meters tall. And the, cat, the shadow that it's casting is one and a half meters. And we, of course, don't know how tall this is, right, from our triangle, but we know, let's say that the, sh the shadow length here is 12 meters. And once again, the goal here is to set up these proportions, these equivalent ratios, and to set them up carefully. So I'm gonna, again, do my short side of my small triangle, and I'm gonna compare that to the corresponding side here, which is 12. And the long side of that same triangle is three, but we do not know, right, this is our X, we do not know how tall this tower is. And I'm gonna share a few um, tricks so that you can decide what strategy works best for you any given time. And of course, the first thing is that we're just gonna look and say, all right, what's my scale factor? One and a half times what makes 12? And I would divide 12 by one and a half and I would find out that that is eight. So I would multiply three times eight, that's my scale factor, and get 24. But sometimes there's a more obvious way to do it, right? And you want to be flexible in your thinking here. So this time I'm looking at it and saying, oh my goodness, I noticed that the long side is twice the short side of my little triangle. So that means that has to be the same on my larger triangle. And I would do 12 times 2 and I would find out, oh, yep, x is 24. And this is all in meters, of course. And lastly, I can also use the butterfly method, right? I can loop these together. We haven't talked about the butterfly in a while, but I could do three times 12, which is 48. And then I could divide that, oh, I'm sorry, 36. And then I could divide that by one and a half. And I would also get that X is 24 meters. Either way, this all works out to be 24 meters. That means the height of my tower is 24 meters. So we'll end with just having you have a chance to try one of these. So I have a lamppost and I have a person standing here uh, and I've labeled some information and I want you to come in knowing what the scale factor is from one shape, one triangle to the other. These are similar, of course. I want to see the proportion you set up and I would like you to tell me how tall or how high up the street light is. So remember that the essential question for this video was how we could use shadows to find heights. It's really cool, I think, and it's really neat to see um, this strategy. So make sure you come in with any questions you might have so that we can give this a try ourselves.